Welcome to the Gelato Expert Academy. I'm Luca Musolesi and I will be your guide in the gelato and ice cream world. In the Gelato Expert Academy, you can learn online everything you need to know about gelato and ice cream. For more information, check out the link in the description. In this introduction video, I will bring you into the world of gelato and you will see how a gelato recipe is formulated and then produced. So, let's start talking about gelato. What is gelato? Gelato is a frozen dessert, which means that is generally sweet, being a dessert, and being frozen, that is served at a temperature below 0 degrees Celsius or below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Then it's consumed at the end of a meal or as a snack during the day. But to be recognized as gelato, it should also contain a certain amount of air and a certain amount of liquid water that contribute to its special texture. So this brings us to a more scientific definition of gelato and we will say that gelato is a heterogeneous mix. What does it mean? A heterogeneous mix it means that at the same time we have three phases of the matter liquid, gas and solid. For the liquid phase we have a sugar solution, water with dissolved sugars. Then for the gas phase we have air bubbles. And for the solid phase we obviously have ice crystals that give the frozen part to the frozen dessert. But then we also have fat, fibers, uh, proteins and other solids. All these components are necessary to form what we know and recognize as gelato. Now you might wonder, is there a difference between gelato and ice cream? Well, gelato is the Italian word for ice cream. However, we can refer to gelato as the Italian style ice cream and with ice cream to the American style ice cream. This is clearly not an absolute definition, but it's something that helps us to identify what we mean with gelato. In the 10 modules course of the Gelato Expert Academy, we will try to understand better the differences between the two, but we can already consider a couple of major differences. For example, fat. Gelato has generally a lower fat content, around 6 to 12 or even 14% of fat, while American style ice cream has a higher fat content, usually above 10% and it can reach even 20-25%. Then another difference that is not always true, but in general we can consider it, is the overrun, meaning the amount of air that there is in the, our product. In gelato we usually have a low overrun, so not a lot of air, while in ice cream we have a higher amount of air in the product. Now, what are the ingredients that we use to make gelato? Well, we start with basic ingredients uh, that are milk, cream, sometimes eggs and sugar. Then, of course, we have all our flavoring ingredients uh, that can be pistachio, hazelnut, chocolate, vanilla, coffee, herbs, fruit, any kind of ingredient that gives a characterizing flavor to our product. Then we have other ingredients like dextrose, glucose syrup or corn syrup if you are in the States, honey, fibers, skim milk powder, stabilizers, emulsifiers, ingredients that are considered more as technical ingredients. And I usually like to consider the ingredients as two categories, flavoring ingredients on one side, which are the ingredients that give us the flavor of the gelato, and functional ingredients on the other side, that are necessary for the texture that we want to achieve, for example. Clearly, some of the ingredients uh, can be in both categories at the same time. For example, milk 
or honey. They give flavor, but they also have a technical purpose. Now, if we want to start formulating our recipes, the first step is, in fact, deciding the ingredients. So, we start with flavor sources, and we decide what are the flavoring ingredients that we put in our gelato. Can be nuts, coffee, chocolate, vanilla, and so on. Then, we already talk about fat, so we will need fat sources. And one of the most used fat sources for gelato and ice cream is cream. But fat can also come from nuts, it can also come from eggs, for example, and for other, from other ingredients. Then, a very important part of our gelato, as we will see in the 10 modules course, is the sugar spectrum, meaning which type of sugars we are going to use to give the texture and the sweetness that we want. To start simple, we use three types of sugar. Sucrose, which is the normal table sugar, that can be cane sugar or beet sugar. Then we have dextrose, and then glucose syrup, also called corn syrup in North America. Then we also have naturally occurring sugars that are present in the milk, for example, or in the fruit, or any other ingredients that we will add as a flavoring, for example. Then we have stabilizers that we will explain better in the full course. Then other technical ingredients like skim milk powder, for example. So how to formulate our gelato recipe? We start by deciding the percentage of flavoring ingredients because we want to decide how much flavor we want to give to our gelato. Then we can decide the total fat content and we can add cream or other fat ingredients to reach our aim. Then, very important, we want to decide the total solid content. Then we adjust the sugars, usually the three types that we mentioned before, but could be two, could be four, depending on the type of recipe that we want to produce. And then we add stabilizers that are usually on a defined percentage that is indicated on the, by the manufacturer. Then we can put salt, uh, milk powders and other technical ingredients, and we finish our recipe by adding milk. Milk is the main source of water. That is what will crystallize and freeze and become ice crystals. At the end, we can adjust our recipe to meet the goal of the parameters that we set and we want to achieve. But what are these parameters? And what are the parameters that we have to take into consideration when we are formulating our gelato recipe? Well, there are a few very important parameters, and these are the total amount of sugars, including the sugars that we are adding and the naturally occurring sugars, then the fats that are present in our product, then we have a parameter that we discuss in depth in the full course, which is the freezing point that is important for the creaminess and for the extraction of the gelato. Then we have a very important parameter is total solids, so a balance between the solids and the water in our recipe. And finally, another ingredient that in some circumstances is important, which is the lactose saturation, which is the concentration of lactose the sugar naturally present in milk, in water, because if it's above a certain threshold, it might cause some problems. In the Gelato Expert Academy full course, we discuss all the ranges of these parameters and also other parameters that we can consider when formulating the recipes. But here I can give you some average uh, percentages of these important parameters. So for the total sugars, we can have an average content of 24-25%. For fats, 9% is in modern gelato a fair uh, average. As freezing point, we will set around minus 2.9 degrees Celsius. Total solids, we are less strict, but we want at least 38% of total solids to have a gelato that is creamy enough. Then, just uh, to control, we will check that the lactose saturation is below 10%. How do we calculate these values? 
In the Gelato Expert Academy, we use our web app called Gelato Passport Plus, of which you can find the link in the description. With Gelato Passport Plus, we have our personal database of ingredients where we can add or change any ingredient and all the parameters that we need for the gelato formulations are calculated. We can also use it as a quick tool for production when we are in the lab and we can even create our nutritional labels. So, now let's formulate a simple recipe of Fior di Latte or Vanilla. Fior di Latte is the most simple flavor that you can find in gelato. It doesn't even have vanilla. But if you wish, you can just add to this flavor some vanilla in pods, in powder, as an extract, as you want, and you will get a vanilla flavor. So what we are going to do is we are going to use approximately the standard values that we mentioned before for sugars, fat, freezing point and total solids. The flavoring ingredients here are the milk and cream. Then we have our sugar spectrum, some skim milk powder, stabilizer and that's it. So let's go and formulate our recipe and then let's see how we can produce it in the lab. Now we are here in Gelato Passport Plus and we are starting the formulation of our recipe. We already positioned and inserted the rest, the ingredients that we need. In the app we can add or remove ingredients easily. So we have milk, cream, sucrose, dextrose, dry glucose syrup, skim milk powder and stabilizers. Now we will start from the cream. The reason is that the cream is our first flavoring ingredient and also the ingredient that brings fat. We want around 9% of fat, we said. The cream that we have contains 35% of fat, so we can start with around 200 grams for one kilo. I usually create recipes for one kilo because it's easier to see the percentages, because on one kilo, 200 grams means 20% of our recipe. With 20 percent of one kilo we already get seven percent fat the rest of the fat will probably come from the milk then we can always do adjustments later at this point we can put already what we know by the manufacturer which is stabilizer and usually the dosage of stabilizer is around five or six grams per kilo so we can already write five uh, then at this point we have left the sugars the skim milk powder and the milk uh, skim milk powder, we will see in the 10 modules course uh, that we have a range of values that we can easily uh, change depending on our taste and on our preferences, but we can start for example with 4.5%, so 45 grams on 1 kilo. At this point uh, we have to place uh, the sugars. Uh, the first sugar and the main sugar that we use is sucrose, normal table sugar. This will also have the highest percentage and we start with a 14% and we will have lower amounts of dextrose and dry glucose syrup. Our goal is to have around 24-25% of total sugars that we will be able to read here once we have all the ingredients. So we will put uh, around 2% of dextrose and 3 or 4%, in this case 3.5% of dry glucose syrup and we should get more or less all the sugars that we need. In uh, the full course uh, you will learn better about different sugars and how to combine them and how you can use them to change the sweetness, the flavor and the texture of your gelato. But at this point, here we have our sugars, so we just need to add water or better milk. So what is left to reach 1000, we put it as milk and now we can check what are the values that we have in our recipe. So in terms of sugars, we have 24.89, which is exactly just below 25%, which was our aim. Then we have 9.14% of fat, which again is just a little bit above our aim. And then very important, total solids. Total solids is 
already above 38%. So we are sure that we will get a gelato that is creamy enough. Then we can increase or decrease this value if we want a gelato that is a bit colder or warmer, a bit more uh, creamy or less. But this is a good standard to start with. Then if we go below in our Gelato Passport Plus, we see a full list of all the parameters that we are interested in. And we can see the freezing point that is a little bit below what we said, minus 2.9. We can change it, but it's close enough. For example, if instead of this dry glucose syrup, we use maltodextrin, which as you will learn in the full course is basically the same thing as glucose syrup, but with a different DE number, you will learn what it is in the full course. Then we get to our minus 2.9 uh, degrees Celsius, which is exactly what was our goal at the beginning. The last parameter that we said that we have just to take in consideration and just have a look to control it is the lactose saturation. Lactose saturation is 9.27, so it's just below our 10% threshold, and we are sure that uh, we will not have problems. What problems? Mostly a high lactose saturation can cause uh, sandiness uh, in the gelato. Here, if we want, we have all our information, our nutritional label, and we can also start the production while we are in the lab. So now let's go to the lab and produce uh, this first recipe. Now we are in the gelato lab and let's have a look uh, at how the gelato machine is made. So today here we have a combined machine. This is just one type of machine. If you follow our Gelato Expert Academy, you will learn about all the different types of gelato production. But for today, let's make it simple and let's have a look at this machine. This machine comprises two processes in one machine. In the upper part, it pasteurizes the mix. It heats the mix up to the temperature that we want. In the lower part, the machine freezes our hot mix and transforms it into what we call gelato. So, in the first part, we have our door that we can open and we can see the barrel for the heating. Then we can close it, make sure it's closed. We pour the mix from here, then we heat it. When it's uh, uh, hot, we can open this passage so we can go from the hot part to the cold part. When we go to the cold part, we have a little bigger barrel. And why is this bigger, the cylinder for the freezing? Well, because during the heating, we don't have an increase in air. While during the freezing, we have an increase in volume because the air goes inside our gelato. For this reason, for the same amount of mix, in the hot part, we need a certain size. In the cold part, we need a bigger size to accommodate the bigger volume of our product. So after the gelato has been heated, then has been put inside our freezing cylinder, we can start the production. And then when it's ready, the machine will tell us we can open this door to remove all the gelato from this door. Once it's done, you will see, you can open and remove what is left inside. Then in most of the machine, we also have a little shower that we can use to clean, uh, to clean easier the machine. Depending on the machine that you have, you can have different types of controls. In this machine, for example, we have uh, some programs for the hot part, like, for example, different temperatures, 66, 65, 85, 90 degrees and so on. We have uh, to activate the shower, we have rotating without heating, and then in the cold part, we have different programs for milk gelato, for uh, fruit gelato, for granita, and so on. Of course, this depends on the type of machine that you have, but uh, 
those are all possible programs that machines can have. And depending on the program that you're doing, you will choose one over the other. Now, let's see how to make the gelato, a simple vanilla flavor or pure de latte flavor, and then how to put it in a machine and extract it. Uh, so what we do, we first take our barrel for the liquids and we wait on our scale, we wait the cream. I always start with the heavier ingredients. So we wait the cream. Then we wait the milk. Okay, at this point we have our liquid part. So here we have our mixture of cream and milk. We leave it aside and then we take another barrel and we wait the powders. We wait the powders in a different barrel because it's easier if we are going to make mistakes. Uh, we can correct them. If we put everything together, it's easier to make mistakes, but you can do it. It's not a problem. So we need sucrose. Here we have our sucrose and we need dextrose. Our dry glucose syrup. And finally, the skim milk powder. And our base six. At this point, I can put my powders on the liquids. So I have here my milk and cream and here my mix of powder. I can also give it a little stir, but it's not necessary. Add them. And now I can go and mix them. Now our mixture is ready and I can put it in the machine. First, I will pasteurize it at 85 degrees and then I will freeze it until when it's uh, gelato. So here we have our part of pasteurizer and we can introduce our mixture. We'll make sure everything is closed and then we can pour it. Okay, then we close our lid and we start the program at 85. Now the machine starts eating and when it's ready, it will give us a signal and we can proceed with the freezing. The pasteurization process is done, the heating process is done, so we can transfer our gelato in the freezing cylinder. Here the machine gave us the signal, so we check that everything is closed and then we can transfer the mix. At this point we select our program for gelato and we start. Now, our machine is telling us that the product is ready. So we extract from the machine, we put it for a while in the blast chiller, and then we put it in the showcase. Okay. 
extract the first part and then we can go with the extraction process. Okay, we can stop, remove a bit what is left in, inside. If the machine has the scrapers in good condition, there shouldn't be a lot inside. Okay, now we have here our gelato. We can put it in the blast chiller for a few minutes and then in the showcase. Now our gelato is in the showcase after batch freezer, blast chiller, and then it's ready in the showcase. And we can then make our cup. So we take our gelato, you see that it's very smooth, still a bit soft, but okay to serve. And then we can put in our cup. And here we are ready to serve.